I looked around the locker room one day. The guys were reading the Wall Street Journal, uh, ESPN the Magazine, Playboy, Cigar Aficionado, uh, you name it. And I was Rob like, Report. Rob Report. <laughs> I was like, what if I combine all that content into one magazine? And that's when OT was born. This is Entrepreneurs the Playbook, where I give you access each week to the world's greatest athletes and executives about their personal and professional playbook and what has made them champions on and off the field. This is The Playbook. Hi, this is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing, and we're at The Playbook for Entrepreneur. And I am here with an incredible athlete, which really doesn't mean much when I say that because I'm always with incredible athletes. What makes this guy special is he is an incredible businessman, uh, which makes it really rare to be able to have the discipline, training, skill sets, desire to achieve the highest honors in football but also to then translate it over to a completely different competitive field of business. So I'm here with Ryan McNeil, and he is an ex-NFL superstar, university, the U <laughs> of Miami, like the Ohio State University. Ryan McNeil, welcome to The Playbook. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. I thought, you know, for the few viewers that may be a little bit younger and don't remember you playing, if you could give a little bit of background at first on just kind of your football career itself. Uh, sure, so um, I'm from Florida. Uh, went to high school at uh, Fort Pierce Westwood High School. Um, wasn't that highly recruited. I think track was my first love, so I uh, excelled in track, uh, excelled in basketball You're a really little bit. The four by one, right? Exactly, <laughs> but I was a late bloomer in football and uh, uh, came on strong my uh, end of my sophomore year, junior year. And senior year, obviously, I got noticed by the University of Miami. Butch Davis came to, uh, to scout me and uh, brought Jimmy Johnson to the house. And uh, I guess the rest was history as far as me committing to University of Miami. Got down there, was lucky and fortunate enough to be around other talented guys. Uh, we won uh, two national championships. That's I was it. a two-time All-American. <laughs> <laughs> two-time All-American. And um, only lost five games in five years. Um, so I was probably around some of the most talented college athletes in history. Um, uh, that allowed me uh, to fulfill my dream to be uh, a part of the National Football League. Uh, I was Detroit's first pick in 1993 um, and played 11 years. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be all pro twice uh, and uh, selected to go to the Pro Bowl twice. Um, so back when, that's when back when the Pro Bowl was fun. You actually got to go to Hawaii with your whole family. Exactly. And play the game. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Um, you invite family and friends and, uh, and get a chance to meet the guys. Yeah. You know, uh, you compete uh, every day, every week, um, but you really didn't know each other. And so uh, the Pro Bowl was one of those times when uh, you really got a chance to, to, to meet someone that you didn't know, especially who wasn't part of your team. And that's where a lot of the good relationships or deep relationships were forged. Um, you know, you should know, you know, you've worked with Lee Steinberg a lot and obviously Warren, and uh, there was many trips over there. But, you know, as a player, it's always fun to go get me somebody new and uh, and kind of really see what they're, they're like. You know, I was a mental guy. I always used to take notes of, you know, what a guy, you know, was eating, uh, how he walked, what kind of music he listened to. So when I competed against him, I, I kind of had a, a dossier of, uh, of all the guys I went against. So it was fun uh, going over the Pro Bowl because I got able to get a lot of good notes. That's awesome. And, and that's what makes you unique, Ryan, is that you have all these little idiosyncrasies or habits that you form playing that made you a better player. Right. But they translated so well onto you know the business field, as I call it. When did you start kind of looking at you know, what am I going to do after I'm playing to make money or fulfill my, my dreams there? So I have a different perspective on myself. I always thought of myself as a businessman playing football. Nice. So even before I signed my first contract, even day one, uh, I looked at myself as a businessman playing football, and I knew that uh, playing professional football was a job. Uh, I didn't see it as a career because um, I wish I would have represented you. Let me tell you why real quick. Because yeah. I needed to find, you know, we had Aikman, Young, and Moon, and all these great guys. Right. But a guy like you, what I could have done, because I saw this great business model for a player, and it was this. Why don't you let 
those guys that are the idiots that are buying the Ferraris, the Porsches, and the extra homes, right. why don't you let them borrow money from you, take a first security interest in those cars? <laughs> <laughs> we could have been the first loan sharks of the NFL. Well, it would have been a great business. Somebody needed to. And so, you know, I knew that I didn't know how long my career was going to last or my job was going to last. Uh, so when I tell people all the time, it's like a career to me is being an attorney. A career to me has been a doctor where it spans decades and not years. And so the average at that time. And who gave you that perspective? Because that's like an old soul. Why? You know, I, I represent a lot of guys with Lee, you know, and, and none of them really understood that, you know, this is I'm just paid for my passion, passionate, passionate hobby because nobody plays in the NFL for life. Warren tried to. Right. He played till he's 44. Right, right. But that's still not life. Right. Right, a lawyer plays till he's seventy. <laughs> so, so I've always been that way. Really? Uh, my friends would tell you I was serious from day one. Uh, you know, even the little league uh, practice, we warming up. I would always tell my team to cut the chatter. You know, no giggling in my right. line when we warm. I was always like this. I've always been. Uh, Which is weird. You went to the University of Miami. You must have been the oddball out with all those guys. Guy. Well, you had well, to Ray have, Lewis. You had to have somebody to kind of keep. You know, how, how to. Keep, keep the peace and, and, and keep everybody in line. And so I was one of those guys, even at an early age, even as a freshman. I started my freshman year, my, my retro freshman year, and then from then on, uh, same thing when I got into the to the NFL. Uh, we had probably a third or fourth oldest locker room, guys like Benny Blades, uh, Brett Perriman, uh, Lomas Brown, Kevin Glover, uh, Ray Crockett, you know, all those guys, Mike Johnson, Chris Billman. You know, I learned – under those guys. And so when I first got there, I held out. So I was a little bit behind. And so Chris Spielman literally locked me in the film room with him probably for the first month, month and a half of my, uh, of my, my career. Yeah. Wow. Because it forced me to watch film, uh, taught me what to look for, things like that. And, uh, and so that just added on the layer of, what I, of how serious I already, already was. And I've been like that uh, for the rest of my career. And so... Uh, I look at the sports as a serious fun, you know. Uh, I tell guys to enjoy. enjoy That's why I look at business. That's why I look at business. It's serious fun to me. Make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun. And and so, you know, that easily uh, translated uh, over to the business world because, uh, you know, it, it took a while for me to find my passion. And you say, you know, when did it click? And for me... I'm always a planner. So probably about my fourth or fifth in the league, I was like, okay, I'm lucky. I passed the average. Yeah. You know, what am I, uh, what am I going to do? And uh, I started doing some research. The NFL didn't have a lot of information. Uh, the NFL Players Association didn't have a lot of information as far as transitioning. Yeah. Uh, so that's when I created my first business, PBFN, Professional Business and Financial Network. And essentially, Dave, I wanted to make entrepreneurship cool. You know, that was my goal. I didn't want to manage anybody's money, yeah. uh, but I wanted to make entrepreneurship cool, and uh, and that started me uh, on my way um, down the entrepreneurial road. And from there, uh, we launched OT Magazine, and OT Magazine was the business and lifestyle guide for professional athletes. Um, I looked around the locker room one day. The guys were reading the Wall Street Journal, uh, ESPN and Magazine, Playboy, Cigar Aficionado, uh, you name it. And I was Rob like, Report. Rob Report. <laughs> I was like, what if? I combine all that content into one magazine, and that's when OT was born. Uh, fast forward uh, a couple years, we took OT Digital, and um, and fast forward until now, uh, you know, two of my passions is uh, technology and sports. And so uh, right now, I'm able to combine both my passions with with sports ID. And so I think I found I found my home yeah. as far as uh, the next 10, 15, 20 years of what I want to do. That's awesome. And so with sports ID, why don't you tell us a little bit about how, you know, from the, this digital side of media that you're in, it evolved and what exactly you guys do. So think of sports ID as an online bio for sports. Um, right now, our focus is on uh, youth sports and youth athletes and youth athletics. Uh, but eventually, we want to be able to qualify and quantify everything and everybody in the sports ecosystem. Um, and we built a platform. Think of it as akin to LinkedIn, but with statistics and analytics built in. And combined with a little bit of, you know, one of those Yelp-like reviews, right? Because you do have... Exactly. So, so, so that comes in for Camp ID. Yeah. So we'll build the platform and we'll plug in uh, to the platform 
additional products and services. And one of the first products we're launching is called Camp ID. And Camp ID is like the Angie's List or Yelp for, for sports camps. Um, for the last 15, 20 years, family and friends, you know, have always called yeah. uh, right before the summer, like, where should I send my son or daughter? Uh, you know, who's the best coach? Where's the best camp? And so I will always ask about three questions. One, you know, how much money are you willing to spend? Uh, two, how far are you willing to travel? And three, uh, what's the skill set of your son or daughter? And with those um, uh, three answers, I can usually help them navigate where to be, uh, where to go, and where to be, and um, and what to expect. And so uh, I realized helping a mutual friend of ours, Hannibal Navies, yes. and his uh, 360 Academy did a lot of research and found that there was a bigger problem. And so what uh, I focused on is solving uh, that particular problem for not only uh, family and friends, uh, but for the whole sports ecosystem. And I have a simple business philosophy, Dave, is to solve small problems for big markets. We, you and I both know Just, sports is a huge market. And people don't understand it. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. So, you, you know, it's funny as we, we, you know, we're over at Junior Achievement and, and with some really great minds like Mark Thompson and, right. and Bob Proctor, the exactly. lady from Facebook, but uh, they brought up jobs and uh, Mark Thompson created something, one of the first MP3 players in 99, when I had the first smartphone with, okay. with Samsung. Okay. Okay. And, you know, he brought it to Steve Jobs because those guys went to high school together. Right. And so he brought it to him and he literally told him, hey, man, that thing is way too complex and get out of that business fast right. because I'm inventing something right. that everyone's going to buy. It's simple and it's easy to use. Right. So it's the simple, small right solution right. for the big markets, right. like the stupid uh, fidget spinner, right. right? Those are the ideas, huge market, right. e simple idea, right. but making big money. You know, as we kind of finishing out here, two questions. Number one, I always like to ask people, what do you see as your biggest challenge or maybe even the biggest mistake you've made so far as an entrepreneur? You know, the good thing is a defensive back, you're used to failure. Right? It's like being a baseball player, right? You got to have the shortest memory in the right. world because there, I can't find one. You don't want to be used to failure, but, right. but, but, but you can yeah, adapt and make right, right, right. <laughs> forget about it. You're never used to it. Right. But I think even more, because, you know, I was a DB, not of your stature, right? But, you know, I carry that idea that, look, this is a learning process. That guy may have just toasted me once, but it's not happening again. What was that moment for you in business? So being in team sports most of my life, uh, you had individuals uh, and a collective uh, all uh, focus on the same goal. Uh, in business, you have different personalities uh, that their motivations may be a little different. In team sports, it's winning. You know, do whatever it takes to win. Uh, you win as a collective. Uh, you get noticed. You, get no, you know, have notoriety. And um, you feel good. Business is a little different. And so one of the things that my biggest challenges or biggest failures, however you want to classify it, is uh, uh, building a team of folks who had different motivations, uh, not for the collective good of the company, but for you know, prestige, money, ego, ego, and you got to find out everybody's motivation, you know, what makes them tick. And, and that, that, was a, that was a tough lesson to learn because I thought I selected the best of the best, uh, folks who were part of the sports space, people who came from uh, a great corporate environment, at least what I thought, and had great reputations. But putting them in a startup or a small business setting didn't work, uh, uh, didn't work for the collective. And eventually, we had to change the team. But that's probably one of the biggest challenges. And, uh, and I'm a perfectionist, right? Yeah. I think, you know, as an athlete, you think you can't fail in anything. But that was probably the biggest thing uh, that I can easily evaluate athletic talent but when it came to uh, uh, corporate uh, employee talent, uh, I'm a lot more better now uh, than I was 10 years ago when I made that mistake. And so I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges I had. One of the things that I see from you know, athletes is that at whatever level we've all experienced, you know, Pro Bowls, championships, you were right. blessed to have two national championships. And you know, I've recruited athletes and there's some athletes that will tell you the, the greatest moment of their life was winning the national championship. Mm -hmm. And they never moved on to the NFL. Right. You won two of them. Right. Uh, you know, you played for the Lions and others and you know, other players like Warren never won the Super Bowl. Right or Andre Reid or Jim Kelly and those right, guys, right. but they went to the Super Bowl. Everyone has their level of championship. Right. Uh, and outcomes are important, but I believe 
that you enjoy the journey to the outcome and see past it. Right. What's your next national championship? You, you know what that feels like. Very few people do, right. and you've done it twice. So if I was gonna say, okay, you're in business now, what's your national championship? What's gonna make you feel the same way as you did walking off the field with all those cheerleaders all over you and the whole world going, oh my God, you got this sucker right here, a big ring. The, that's, that's a very good question and put in, those, in, in that context, I think, uh, probably a, a combination of things. One, um, a force to get funded uh, to scale our company, uh, and then I'll two, help you with that. And, 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 <laughs> and, and then two, uh, one of the reasons why I built Sports ID is for uh, that young athlete not to get bypassed, right? So uh, the thing I always go back to the University of Miami, and the thing that I want them to experience is experiencing those games, that competition at the highest level. And so I know if it wasn't for sometimes the grace of God, you know, I wonder if I would have been at the University of Miami and Butch Davis would have seen me come out to my practice and, and Jimmy Johnson would have came in my house and invited me to be a part of his team. I think that the next biggest thing for me is to, is to see uh, as many of uh, – today's youth participating in sports because sports changes lives for the better uh and i'm out i'm out i'm i'm i set out to prove that with data and analytics the more kids participate in sports the better they do in school the better uh they um they are uh with their peers with their siblings uh the better citizens they become the better the better leaders they become and so i'm 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 set out to prove that because i think that uh, because of the budgets that are being cut in different school systems and different uh, programs um, that, you know, people who have been involved in sports for a long time, you know, it's our duty to make sure the next generation and the generation after that are able to participate in sports. And so, you know, when we have, you know, five million kids on the platform participating in sports, we can qualify and quantify that. That's, that'll be my Super Bowl. That is awesome. What a legacy that will be. This is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing, here with Entrepreneur, The Playbook, and with one of my national champions. It's just a pleasure not only to have seen you on the field mature, but then more importantly, to become a friend of yours and to see you off the field because you are truly what entrepreneur represents. You, you look for the betterment of all, you're figuring it out, and I see you as a pro bowler you know, many, many times for many more years than the short-lived career that most football players have. So thanks, Ryan McNeil, for coming thanks on for the Playbook. Me. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. You know, I started off on a community radio station in Minneapolis with a 4 a.m. shift, mixing for an hour with maybe three listeners, if I was lucky, and, and worked my way up, and it wasn't easy. <laughs> you know, I got told no and had way yeah. more failures than I've had successes, but it's just being persistent and not giving up. 